Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for coming to our press conference today. I know we had one yesterday with the announcement of the fights uh, for tomorrow night. Uh, but today we have something really special. Uh, I think that um, when I look back in uh, the career of my promotion company, we really started as a kickboxing company. And this was in 1985. We started a kickboxing series that aired on ESPN, actually. This was before ESPN had Major League Baseball, Major League, we had NFL, had anything. We, it was Australian Rules Football Sports Center, and it had martial arts programming, which was our kickboxing. Fighters had to wear long pants down to their ankles. Mm. They had to get eight, eight kicks per round. Gilbert remembers. And uh, no, you're, you're, too, you're too young, Gilbert, don't worry. But, but um, it was, it, it evolved from full contact karate to kickboxing, and eventually MMA came. But throughout the 90s, um, I always loved promoting kickboxing, worked with promoters all over the world, had a chance to work for many organizations. And uh, today we're happy to announce that Spike TV and Bellator and our whole operation is going to go into the kickboxing business. And we're going to start Bellator Kickboxing in 2016. And uh, I'd like to introduce a person that you guys know already, our Senior VP of Sports and Specials from Spike TV, Mr. John Slusser. Thanks. So on behalf of Spike and Viacom and Bellator, I am just want to say I'm thrilled to be part of this today on this uh, terrific announcement. You know, Scott Coker is the best promoter in the business, and we're thrilled to partner with him on Bellator Kickboxing. Uh, we love kickboxing, and what we've learned about kickboxing is that you need to build recognizable stars for the U.S. audience to cheer for, and no one is better suited for that task than Scott Coker. You've seen him do it at Strike Force, K1. Now he's doing it for here, as you can see from this terrific event. And we're thrilled to help him do that um, and with kit Bellator Kickboxing. So Spike is fully behind Scott's efforts in this new adventure, and we can't wait to help him build something great. Uh, now I'd like to turn it over to Frank Tanky, the EVP of Creative and Marketing for Spike. Talk more about this uh, brand. Great. Thanks very much, John. It's a true pleasure to be here today. You know, really at Spike right now, we've raised the stakes with everything we're doing, the production and quality of our messaging. And certainly sports is no exception. So when we started to look at the look and feel of Bellator kickboxing, we wanted to have a real strong, polished uh, logo. We wanted to kind of tap into the equity of Bellator itself, but yet also have something that could stand on its own. So uh, I'm very, very proud to reveal our logo. There it is. We're really, really excited about getting behind this in a big way. We're going to promote it uh, like only Spike can. So we've got all of our resources behind this in a big way. Um, and I'm going to turn it back over to Scott in a second. Um, as many of you know, Scott has been promoting fights for 30 years. And many of those years were promoting kickboxing with K1. So as John mentioned, there's truly not a better man for the, drop, the job and really no one within Spike that we would rather work with on this endeavor. So, Thank Scott you. Coker. Thank you. Thanks, Frank. Thanks, John. Um, I'd like to introduce some of the fighters that, um, that are going to be fighting in our inaugural event, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But um, let's have uh, Raymond Daniels come out. Raymond Daniels is assigned Bellator kickboxing fighter. OK, sorry. I thought he was back there. Kevin Ross, come on out. Kevin is a, a fighter that I actually met uh, back when he was, gosh, it's probably back in the in 2000, 2001, and uh, he was just starting then and fighting out of Las Vegas from Master Tati, and he's had a, quite a career fighting for line fights and different promotions. Uh, he is a skilled martial artist at the highest level. We're proud to have Kevin on board. Uh, next is Joe Schilling. Please come up. You guys all know Joe, he uh, won the Glory Tournament and has been fighting on Spike many times. And uh, he'll be fighting in Bellator Kickboxing uh, in 2016 and beyond. Uh, next is uh, a fighter that we all know from the Dynamite Show, uh, Kerry Melendez.
So Gilbert, you have to tell us, are you, do you get more nervous when you fight or when Carrie fights? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, last but not least, uh, we have a fighter from uh, Russia that we signed and she'll be fighting in uh, our inaugural show as well on the MMA side, but she's here training out of Los Angeles. We invite her today and that's Anastasia Yankunova. So a lot of the females that you'll see us uh, fight will be in the 125 pound weight class and uh, we'll announce some other weight classes beyond that. But um, the next gentleman I'm gonna introduce you to um, has been a friend of mine since the mid 90s and we had a chance to work together in San Jose. He brought some Italian fighters over to San Jose, had some big fights on ESPN. I took a, uh, I took a team to Rimini, uh, Italy to a, a fight that he had and we had this relationship of uh, sharing fighters back and forth. And then eventually I got to MMA and, and, uh, and, and really was just watching kickboxing and watching Carlo do his thing. And uh, he is probably the most successful promoter in Europe uh, for the last you know, 20 years. I've been watching him fill 15 to 18, sometimes 20,000 seat arenas uh, in Milan. And uh, he's our partner in uh, our inaugural event. And that's gonna be for the kickboxing and MMA, so we're gonna do both at Carlo's event, and that's um, in April. And uh, I'd like to introduce Mr. Carlo de Blasi here from Milan, Italy. Thank you, Scott, and mainly thank you, Viacom, that offered us this great opportunity to show, finally, the kickboxing, the stand-up fighting that in Europe are really big, even uh, overseas. In, a, in the United States, where we know there are a lot of fighters that they're just waiting to come and show up in our big event. And the big event is going to come in Turin, April 16th. Why Turin? Turin in 2006 has been the Olympic city for winter sports. And now, 10 years later, this same city with uh, the mayor of the city ready to open the gates of this, uh, of, of this venue, the biggest one, 16,000 people uh, are expected there will have Balladur Kickboxing episode number one. The great fighter that Scott introduced to you will be facing the best European fighters, which will really make a big, big shock for uh, the people that they know stand up fighting from now. But I am sure that the American audience will love this fight, will love the atmosphere of 16 uh, Italian people shouting and cheering for the fighters, because in Italy, the main thing is the sport. So it doesn't matter where you come from, if you, you're a good fighter, you are my fighter. And that you will understand uh, watching the scene of Turin 2016, April, at the Palais of Zaki. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, you know, just like to maybe open it up uh, for a few um, statements, and we'll start with Joe Schilling, and then we'll get into someone on uh, some questions uh, from the uh, media. Joe? Uh, thank you, Scott. Uh, you know, I'm just really excited to, uh, to be a uh, part of Bellator Kickboxing. You know, I've been uh, a big part of kickboxing in the U.S. for a long time, and I'm uh, you know, really looking forward to uh, carrying that on and uh, waving the American kickboxing flag with Bellator. Great. Kerry? You know, I'm very excited also to be a part of uh, Bellator Kickboxing. I think there's no truer challenge in stepping into a ring and uh, going against your opponent. So, um, I'm, and I'm also excited to represent for the ladies and to be in an organization that puts fighters first. Thank you. Great. Kevin? I'm just uh, really grateful to be able to participate on such a large stage. I've been in the sport for 13 years now and uh, to see it grow and to still be a part of it, I'm just very grateful and fortunate to be doing it and thankful to Scott for having me and uh, um, pushing the sport. Anastasia? Um, now, I um, uh, many time work um, on two things. Uh, one thing, uh, it's grappling. Uh, because I start on kickboxing and uh, grappling is new for me. Wrestling is not easy for me, but I am many time work on it. And two things, it's my English. <laughs> now it's so bad, I know, but I I'm try and uh, I I'm, I'm hope in um, later 
is will be more good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Great. So um, why don't we open up to the media if you guys have any questions for any of the fighters or for John or Frank or Carlo? Yeah, I guess for, for John and Scott both, I mean, why this venture? We've seen, we've seen kickboxing efforts stall even on Spike. Why get back into this business and, and do this again? Um, you know, I think I can answer that. You know, um, you know, I think that if you look at our roster, we have a lot of fighters that can cross over and do both. And I think that uh, when you look at, um, from the TV side, which John can speak to, you know, they like having uh, kickboxing as part of their programming. So uh, I felt like we could do a great job, have the fan base that Bellator has already, and really market to them and speak to them in the sense that, like our first fight, our, our main event in the kickboxing side uh, in Italy will be uh, Melvin Menoff fighting Ale Alexandro Negria. So Melvin's gonna fight in kickboxing. We're gonna have Paul Daly fight in kickboxing. We're gonna have a lot of our guys fight in kickboxing and the other way around. I know that, you know, Anastasia was talking about MMA. She's traditionally a kickboxer, right? Has many fights. She's gonna cross over, fight MMA. Carrie's gonna cross over, fight MMA. So if the fighters want to, Joe's already done it. If the fighters want to come to the MMA space or a kickboxer, you know, wants to stay there, that's fine too. But I think you see a lot of familiar faces and we think it's gonna be a great formula for Spike TV. John, do you have anything you want to add to that? Uh, we love kickboxing. You know, it's a great sport. It's fun to watch. I remember watching Joe fight in the LA Forum, and it was one of the most incredible. It, so, it was one of the best fights I've ever seen. So we love the sport. We think there's a lot of potential still in that sport for the U.S. audience. You know, there's a lot of sport to be uh, action to be unlocked, and a lot of the fans just haven't been. Um, haven't been exposed to the type of promotion that Scott Coker can bring to the table. At the end of the day, we're in the Scott Coker business, and we believe in what he can bring. I mean, he, it's about building stars for that U.S. audience, and there's no better person on the planet to do that than Scott Coker. He did it K1. He did it in uh, Strike Force. He did it. Look at what he's doing here at Bellator. I and mean, when you look around and see what, what he has done already for this Bellator brand, we have 100% faith that he can bring that same star-making capability to kickboxing, and we think there's a lot of potential to be unlocked with the sport of kickboxing. It sounds like the, the athletes are going to be able to, to bounce back and forth, no problem. How about the events themselves? What are we going to see? Is, is it going to be a lot of you know, mixed cards? Are they going to kind of operate independently and come together every now and then? What's the vision for how this thing's going to play out? You're going to see both. You're going to see some fight cards that have both, and like Dynamite. Dynamite was a great example of us doing both. In Italy, we're going to do both. Sometimes you'll see a standalone kickboxing event on its own. So uh, you will see fights in the U.S., but you'll also see some fights internationally as well. That, that answers my question. Okay. Right here. In regards to uh, acquiring talent, a lot of Glory fighters don't have exclusive contracts with Glory. A lot of talent over there. Mm -hmm. Are you have you been looking into acquiring more guys to add to the stable now that you've announced Bellator? You, you know what I tell you, um, really we have not, and I think we have enough fighters right now. We signed a few, but uh, we're gonna we're we're looking for a certain type of fighter. We're looking for a certain personality in the fighter, and uh, that's really what it comes down to. Not every fighter that fights for Glory or any other kickboxing organization around the world is going to be a fit here at Bellator uh, Kickboxing. So um, we will be scouring the planet for the fighters that we want, and those are the fighters that we're going to invest in and we're going to build, and that's really the key word. And in regards to, um, to promoting the kickboxing, I know you, you mentioned that, John, you might do mixed cards. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times the Glory cards were either a late time slot as opposed to Bellator. How, how will you guys push this? Will it be pushed more now that it's, it's the Bellator brand, like kind of it's all inclusive now, as opposed to having Bellator and Glory separate when they were on the same channel? Yeah, you know, that's really um, uh, a question for John. Um, is that something you want to take a break at, or has it been determined? Well, we, yeah, we haven't talked about time yeah. slots or anything like that, but we know that we have a tremendous infrastructure, as you can see, built for Bellator, and we're going to be able to take advantage of that. So inherently, we have uh, an infrastructure and people and resources we can draw on. I mean, when you take Spike and Viacom and the infrastructure of Bellator and you put it together with this guy, you know the results are going to be as successful as it can be. 
and I believe that it will take time, and it, but it will be worth it. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we're in this for the long run, but we know this is the best thing for us, and we know it's the best thing for the sport in the long run. And also, and, um, excuse me, lost my train of thought, but having it on, on the channel, like, promotion-wise, pushing it, like, will there be, um, like, separate Bellator, like, kickboxing as opposed to Bellator MMA? Like, when, like in other words, yeah. like, when did you decide to, to do this? to have it under one umbrella? Was it when you had glory? Did you figure it was better to have it under one brand as Bellator? You know what I'm saying? I mean, actually, the, um, you know, uh, when the glory relationship ended, we had a conversation internally, and I was part of that conversation about, you know, are we gonna go look for another promotion company to bring in, or every, and, and then I said, you know what, why don't we just do it ourselves, right? And I think the infrastructure's here. The, the television network is here. We, we know how to do this as good or better than anybody because this, this kickboxing business is something I've been doing for a long time. So um, it's something that I felt like we could do it properly and let's get our fighters that want to fight in kickboxing, that are fighting in, in MMA right now and let them fight on both sides you know, of the ledger, let's say. And then um, you know, and let's get Spike to drive it because the one thing, honestly, like I've been associated with a lot of different networks and the one thing about Spike that is amazing is they have the ability to drive this message, you know, unlike anything I've ever seen or been associated with. So for that, it's, it's amazing. We have a great platform. We'll have great fighters. We'll have great fights. And we'll have good promoters around the world we work with. And then we'll promote some ourselves. And it's fair to say that kickboxing is it's a part of your life. It's important to you. It's where you started. So to, to keep carrying over into the, the new generation, and it seems like it's really important to you personally to continue to, to try to have kickboxing succeed and keep going. Yeah, I mean, you know what, when, when you look at the Dynamite show, I, I really enjoyed that fight, or the, that event, because it's something where, as a fan, I loved it, because I could go in and sit down, I could watch MMA, and I could turn right here, and I could watch kickboxing. And to me, it, it was like, look, if you love martial arts fighting, it doesn't have to just be MMA. It doesn't have to be just kickboxing. Why can't you watch both? And why can't you watch boxing? I mean, to me, you know, I love fighting arts and martial arts, so to me that was really the genesis of, of this particular venture was, hey, you know, I said to John and Kevin, I think I can do this. Let me, let, let's give it a shot. And, you know, we got all the pieces together, and, and here we are. And, and last one, um, you have Joe Schilling, who obviously fights MMA, fights kickboxing. Mm -hmm. Are you looking to try to build more fighters and personalities like that that can interact into both, not just uh, one or the other? You know what, those types of decisions really are the fighters individually. They, only they can answer that. And um, if Joe wants to fight in MMA again, we'll be happy to have him. If Kevin ever wanted to come over to do MMA, we'd love to have him. And you know, it's an, it's an open book with us. We'll have honest conversations with our fighters and um, you know, we'll let them participate where they want to. You know, I'd just like to add, you know, you brought up, uh, Scott just mentioned boxing as well, and I would like to be the first one to raise my hand. If you want to do all three, I'm the guy for the job. So uh, yeah, I think it's, like you said, it's up to the fighters, and I'm that fighter. I'll fight boxing, I'll fight kickboxing, I'll fight MMA, it's who I am as a person. I love to fight. And you know, think about that, that's, uh, uh, you know, Spike has PBC boxing, so we have an opportunity to have that conversation. And, uh, you know, if Joe, uh, well, he said he wants to do it, maybe we could reach out and, and uh, talk to the boxing guys and maybe put them on a boxing card. Scott. And King Mo, I know he wants to do it. <laughs> 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 this is for the fighters, Joe and Kevin. Can you talk about the opportunity for your sport to have a national platform like Spike, who's been committed to combat sports with that Friday night card, now getting a chance to show your stuff in a regular place where people will be able to find you and it'll become appointment television, hopefully. I mean, you know, Kevin and I have been great friends for a long time and, uh, you know, we've really been digging away at this kickboxing thing in this country for a long, long time and we're both very grateful to have, uh, you know, Spike TV and Scott Cloaker, you know, bringing it to the forefront and uh, giving us the opportunity. So it's amazing, you know, for a long, long time, everyone was like, why don't you do MMA, why don't you do MMA? And I loved kickboxing. I know Kevin loves kickboxing. And, uh, you know, there was no money and no real potential to do it. And we just kept with it and kept with it. And now we're here and the opportunity's here. And we're both very eager and very ready to take advantage of that. Kevin, how, much is, how nice is it going to be 
to be able to tell people where they can find you instead of having to say, well, you've got to look on the internet here or there. Now you actually have a home where you can actually build an audience and a fan base. Yeah, it, it's great being able to have this platform and, and to be able to do what I love to do, what we all love to do, and, and for people to be able to see it. We've been at this sport for a really long time, just in the background, in the shadows. Nobody, nobody knew what was going on, and there's been so many people that have been really pushing it and pushing it, and finally it's, it's at a place where it gets to be viewed and is on a worldwide stage like this. It, it, I couldn't be happier. And, and this is for all the fighters, Kerry included. You guys have been the stalwarts of kickboxing for so long. Now you're going with Bellator. There's MMA right next to it. I know there's got to be a pride for what you guys have been doing so long. So is there going to be a rivalry when maybe King Mo wants to go in there and try to kickbox or one of those MMA guys want to come over and try to, to do what you do or when you guys have to go over there and maybe take on one of them and you're representing all the kickboxers? Joe? Uh, Mo has no interest in kickboxing, I assure you. <laughs> <laughs> Darn, I was trying to get into the card. Uh, but, but as far as rivalry The goes, rivalry with, you know, the, with think, the different um, splits. You know, it's, it always goes back both, back and forth on both ways. MMA fighters say they're better striker. Like, it, it is what it is. Um, I think we're the most exciting sport on the planet. I think that's why it's, the sport is being built and being brought to uh, the mainstream. And I think it's uh, what makes this so incredible is that Bellator has the opportunity to actually cross over kickboxing and bring it to the MMA fans so that the, the world and the MMA world can... Uh, can really see it and it's going to help the sport grow and it's going to help combat sports grow and you know help uh, spike con spike uh, continue to be the the uh, number one place for combat sports in this country great we just had raymond daniels walk in one of the most exciting kickboxers but also point karate fighters and martial artists if you haven't seen raymond fight point karate is quite entertaining and amazing but um, raymond's a fighter that we signed and um, he wasn't here half an hour ago, but now, Raymond, why don't you open up and say a few words? Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to apologize for being late. I'd like to blame that on uh, American Airlines. Uh, <laughs> I was out of my control, and I did what I could to get here, and uh, sped over here, changed in the back seat of a car, and figured it out without my clothes. That's not even my shirt, but it belongs to someone. Uh, but uh, excited to be here. I was actually watching you guys on the Facebook link, so uh, I kind of feel like I've been filled in a little bit. And uh, looking forward to April 16th and uh, going out. And many people don't know I started with uh, Scott back in the day, yeah. one of my first uh, kickboxing matches. So uh, it's a great uh, honor and opportunity to fight for Bellator and a great platform. And I'm looking forward to going out and, and doing what it is that they want me to do is put on a great show for them. Great. Any uh, other questions? Has a, has a complete rule set been finalized yet? Do you know the format of the fights, any specialized rules, anything like that? Yeah, it's going to be uh, kickboxing rules, and um, there'll be um, um, three three-minute rounds, and the title fights will be five rounds. Um, so, and, the, and it's not going to it's not going to be Muay Thai guys. It's going to be kickboxing rules. <coughs> and in uh, fact, if you guys want to talk more about the rules. Uh, Corey Schaefer is over here. He's our rules director for Bellator, for MMA and kickboxing. He's been in the sport a long time, and uh, he'll be happy to answer any questions you guys have on rules, regulations, things like that. Well, Scott, one last thing for me. Because you're going to have the, the event in Turin, does this have an opportunity to grow the Bellator brand even bigger worldwide? Is that, is that one of the things that you like to see that this thing grows? And well, um, maybe when people outside of uh, here, well, Italy thinks about Italy. They think um, spaghetti, pizza, <laughs> uh, good food, sand, which is true. I mean, you will, if you come, you will see all these things. But it's also, as well, um, the shop window of fighting sports for year. So, better coming already with MMA is big, limit. 56% of the ringside already sold. Never happened before with two months before the event. And 11% of the tribunes. It's, it never happened before. And believe me, I run events and they do 12,000 people in the audience, so I'm pretty used in the last uh, 20 years. Um, but you know, the thing is, the, the connection with an American brand so big, coming in a country that expect this as, as it is. I remember in 97, I went to San Jose to a Strike Force event. Uh, we had a world title fight there for ice day at the time. And when I, when I turned around and I saw uh, Chuck Norris sitting there, a lot of VIPs there, celebrities, I thought it could never happen in Europe, which is not. Now we are at that level, but having Bellator on it 
uh, the, believe me, the brand of the Belter itself, going with MMA, it's already big, but going with something that we know pretty well, like kickboxing, uh, you will see things changing the next six months of this event, but really slowly, as fast as it has never been before. And also, uh, one of the things that we're doing with Carlo is we're doing uh, Road to Bellator, Italy. So he's throwing a series of tournaments out there that uh, will lead into a single elimination tournament and uh, we'll eventually have the one winner in different weight classes and those fighters we will sign to Bellator and fight them in our circuit in Europe, in, you know, here in America, uh, wherever we go. So, you know, we're not just doing the one-off with Carlo to do the one-off, we're going to be in business with Carlo and uh, we're going to develop fighters together and we're going to do promotions together uh, in Europe and in different parts of Europe, not outside of Italy as well. Uh, one little thing. Um, in, in Italy, fighting sports um, are something special, like people like not only to watch, but to be there. Uh, ringside, in the past 50 years, we had people like Giorgio Armani, that you know, or I don't know if you are familiar with soccer, but we normally have Mario Balotelli. Uh, uh, one month ago, we had Trezeguet, the, the, uh, which a nephew is fighting in kickboxing. I mean, uh, it's something big. We will really have a connection in Turin with all this work coming from USA and all and the old Europe, joining together with with a sport that it's not. I mean, for us, it's old, but it's not old at all. Only 30 years ago we started, I think. You know. So now, now it's really time for Belgian kickboxing. It's time for this sport to grow up and mix up with MMA and all fighting sport. And why not in the future? Why not boxing as well? A uh, question for John. Do, do you believe, or is your intention, that the cards that take place in Europe, they're going to air on tape delay here in the States? Uh, well, actually, our first, uh, our first one in April will be live. Actually, it's not. Wait, let me, let me rephrase that. It'll be on the same day after our Bellator. live Bellator match. So it will, it will be right after the MMA match. It will air. And then for Scott, I'm, I'll, I'll talk more about the rules uh, with the rule specialist. But I guess I just want to get your perspective. As you know, Glory, they had a rule set that was designed around no clinching, frequency of attack. Mm -hmm. Are you going to model the rule set on those kinds of same precepts? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and it wasn't Glory that originated those set of rules. It was a company called K1 that I used to work for. <laughs> and uh, really, those rules evolved, and eventually it ended up being called the K1 rules. So whether you're in Europe or in Asia or here, everyone still calls it K1 rules. And so we're going to go by those rules, which I really like because it creates a lot of action. And uh, you, you're not going to see the holding and, and you know, and the, sometimes like in the Thai boxing where they're clinching a lot, um, this is going to be an action, fast paced kickboxing, you know, the way I think it should be done. And Scott, what, what about elbows? I mean, you have Joe Schilling here, you got Kevin Ross, and they both yeah. have Muay Thai yeah. practitioners. Yeah. What, that's right, on your yeah, right now we're not going to do the elbows. Yeah. And, and for Joe, you, you do uh, Glory 27, you have a fight left. Is that your last fight with Glory? Do you have more? What's the, your plan set to unfold with that? Um, you know, my relationship with Glory is, is, is very, very good. You know, we, um, I have two fights left uh, with them before June. And then uh, from then on, I uh, intend to be fighting for Bellator kickboxing. Um, I don't know what the future may hold, but uh, I think that uh, I kind of rebooted my, uh, my career with when I won the Glory tournament. Um, here on Spike, and uh, all of my fights have been on Spike TV since. And Glory has gone on to a, a smaller platform, so to speak. And I have been so successful and been such so well taken care of, and it's been great for my career being with Spike. So it was an uh, obvious decision to stick with Spike and stick with Bellator. Um, Scott Coker, I'd always heard really good things. You know, I have a lot of friends in the industry that have fought for Scott before me, and. Uh, I've never, I've been fighting for 15 years. I can't think of one promotion that every fighter likes or that any fighter likes to be honest. Um, Scott has a great reputation and he's, it's 100% true, you know. Uh, I'm with Scott Coker and I'm with Spike TV. And um, the third fight with Artem, Artem Levin didn't happen. I know that was one you really wanted. You wanted to, you know, prove you could beat him again. You wanted that challenge. Is that something that's going to be tough to walk away from? No, not at all. I've had, uh, you said the third fight with Artem, it's been offered like six times. He isn't interested in fighting me for it. The glory title doesn't have a, hold a whole lot of value for me. 
so uh, it really doesn't bother me. I was supposed to fight him on the last Glory show, and he pulled out with an injury, but he's fighting Simon Marcus next week. I'm fighting on that card next week, again, on the undercard, so that should tell you where that, where that is. Thanks, man. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, are we going to do some one-on-ones? Yeah, let's, let's take a group photo, and then we'll uh, break off on one-on-ones. Up here? Yeah. Okay.